Did Iran fund South Africa's approach to the International Court of Justice over Israel? I'm Rebecca Davis, senior journalist for The Daily Maverick. This is a difficult claim to fact check, as will be seen, but it's also quite an important one because it's been repeated by some fairly high profile public figures and it's found quite a bit of traction on social media. We've also been besieged by emails from Daily Maverick readers asking us if this claim is indeed true. The allegation is essentially as follows. The ANC, which for years has been teetering on the verge of bankruptcy, announced in January that it had suddenly managed to stabilize its finances and it didn't really give any specifics on how this had been accomplished. In the same week, South Africa approached the International Court of Justice in The Hague to ask that Israel's actions in Gaza be considered genocide. To some people, the timing of these two events is suspicious. And so the rumor was born that Iran, an enemy of Israel, had paid the ANC to litigate against Israel in the International Court of Justice. The major person spreading this claim seems to have been Franz Cronier, the former CEO of the Institute of Race Relations, in an interview he gave on the Johannesburg radio station Chai FM. What has happened in the Iran case is that South Africa's foreign policy structures have been sold to the Iranians. It's, it's state capture, no different. The South African government is the same thing as Hamas. It's, 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 it's an Iranian proxy, and its role in the war is to fight the ideological and ideas war, to stigmatize Jews around the world. A similar claim was made by advocate Paul Hoffman from Accountability Now. If you take a look at the interaction between Iran and South Africa uh, since the Hamas attack on um, Israel, you'll see that we, we have had quite a lot of uh, interaction, not only with Iran, but also with the uh, Hamas leadership, who actually visited Pretoria. Minister of uh, International Relations visited Iran, and out of that has come the application that has been made in the ICJ by South Africa. The reason why this claim is difficult to conclusively fact check is because we don't have access to the ANC balance sheets. So there's no way to conclusively refute the idea that they just received a massive cash injection from Iran. But we asked the ANC spokesperson Makhlengi Bengu straight up, has the ANC received money from Iran? She replied, quote, unlike other parties or even NGOs for that matter, the ANC does declare where its funding is derived. She's referring there to the regulations of the Political Party Funding Act. And we do know that if the ANC did receive funding from Iran, it would be a violation of this legislation, which prohibits local political parties from receiving funding from foreign governments unless it is for training or policy development. Bengu said that the idea that Iran was paying the ANC to approach the ICJ was, quote, preposterous. It should be noted that the only reason we are led to believe that the ANC has just received some kind of cash injection is because of comments made by the party's Treasurer General, Gwen Ramachopa, on the sidelines of the ANC's January 8th birthday celebrations. She told journalists that the party was in better shape financially, saying, quote, We are still not yet out of the woods, but we have been able to stabilize our finances. Now, we don't know anything further about whether that's even true or whether the ANC is putting on a brave face ahead of elections. But Bengu told us that the party's new financial stability was simply due to membership fees, its debit order system, and in-kind contributions. In terms of the wider claim that South Africa is doing Iran's bidding on the international stage, Department of Justice spokesperson Crispin Piri told Daily Maverick that this was offensive nonsense. In fact, what he said was, and I quote, it is very disappointing that the people who make spurious and conspiratorial claims are not required to support their claims with any evidence. Instead, it's government who has the burden to rebut these spurious claims. There are two specific claims made by advocate Paul Hoffman, which Piri is adamant are factually incorrect. One is that the South African government has had quite, quite a, a lot, lot of interactions interaction. with Iran since the October Hamas attacks on Israel. Piri says there was one one-day meeting between Durko Minister Naledi Pandor and her Iranian counterparts on 22nd October 2023, which was publicly disclosed at the time. Piri also says it is not accurate to say, as Hoffman has claimed, that the South African government has had repeated interactions with Hamas since the October attacks. Rather, it's the ANC which hosted a visiting Hamas delegation in December. And it is not the ANC which has taken Israel to the ICJ, but the Republic of South Africa. There are many who will find this rebuttal unconvincing. But one thing we should bear in mind is that South Africa's approach to the ICJ over Israel is entirely in keeping with its widest stance on Gaza. 
In other words, we don't need a conspiracy theory to explain why South Africa went to the ICJ. Plenty of people might not like it, but it is consistent with the government's policy on Palestine stretching back many years.